the race continues for a coronavirus vaccine, still the highest hopes of treating infections are medicines that already exist, approved for other diseases or in development. It's called repurposing. You want to go with the things that you do know that work, such as remdesivir appears to be being not totally effective, but is helpful. So you'd want to go with drugs like that, maybe plasma, maybe the experimental antibodies that are available. It's important to know at what stage a treatment is most effective. Medicines helpful early on when the infection is mild or there are no breathing problems could be ineffective or harmful to a patient with severe pneumonia. Big pharma firms continue to scour their portfolios for possible solutions. The world has never faced a pandemic of these proportions. In a moment, I'll talk to an expert from the European Medicines Agency. First, a look at some of the drugs that are being repurposed. Antiviral medicines were originally developed for HIV, Ebola, hepatitis C, influenza, and two other coronaviruses, SARS and MERS. They're designed to stop the disease from reproducing or entering lung cells. Anti-inflammatories are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory intestinal diseases. They're supposed to limit the body's defenses and severe lung infestations to avoid further inflammation, which would cause more damage than the disease. Medicines for lung complications are designed to treat idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. They help supply the patient's lungs with sufficient oxygen and help the lungs repair themselves. Cardiovascular medicines were developed to treat blood clots or heart disease. They're now being used to prevent complications from COVID-19. Marco Cavalieri is head of biological health threats and vaccine strategy at the European Medicines Agency. He's a pharmacologist who spent several years in R&D, mainly antibacterials and antifungals in preclinical and clinical development. So Marco, where are we at in treating corona with repurposed medication? Yeah, we're seeing some uh, uh, important advancement. In particular, I think the use of desametazone for treatment of hospitalized patients with COVID-19 and with important results from the recovery study showing the benefit in mortality using desametazone is an important advancement and will be used. And also the antiviral remdesivir, one of the first ones to be uh, tested in clinical trials for the treatment of COVID-19 showed that the ability of reducing uh, the time to recovery, so uh, the time to discharge from the hospital of patients with hospitalized uh, COVID-19. And, and therefore, these are so far the most significant advancement that we are reached in terms of treatment of this uh, disease. Uh, I went through the various treatments before. What, what are the most effective of these treatments? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. There's a metazone indeed uh, has been giving us the most impressive results so far, and we really hope to see other intervention that will be uh, as effective as this one. And really, the combination of different modalities of treatment will be very important to be investigating in the future. Uh, we are posing hope in the new monoclonal antibodies with uh, a neutralizing activity, so really acting as antivirals. And probably the combination of antivirals with the immunomodulators might, might be the most interesting pathway to follow in the future. It took a long time to find the right mix to treat HIV. Uh, are we going to have to wait that long for COVID? We hope not. Of course, here uh, everything is much more compressed in time and uh, unfortunately there are still a lot of patients out with uh, severe COVID-19 and being hospitalized and we are seeing unregretfully in Europe uh, a new wave of, of cases, including severe cases. So we really hope that uh, clinical trials that are running at the moment and there are several efforts will be able to deliver in a much faster way what we need to know about what could be the best intervention here and how to combine the different agents. Of course, it's very important and one of the lessons learned that we need large randomized clinical trials and the small fragmented clinical research that we've seen in the beginning, but also in Europe, uh, is not really helpful because we need large studies to tell us exactly what is working and in which patients. But instead of repurposing all these different drugs developed to treat different diseases, what, what about new therapies? Yeah, in terms of antivirals, indeed, uh, the new wave of products are brand new and uh, they cover both small molecules. 
similar to remdesivir or indeed these uh, antibodies that have the, the potential to neutralize the virus and being very effective. And indeed, we've seen this with other emerging viruses like Ebola, how they can be really impactful in terms of, of reducing the burden of disease. So we are really hoping that all these new medicines will provide uh, really uh, new opportunities and really be helpful and impactful in treating these patients. As you said, the new, new drugs could reduce the burden, the need for hospitalizations. I guess what we do need is a drug that works at all stages, though. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we are really supporting the efforts by many developers to study different drugs at different stages of the COVID-19 disease, starting really from the prophylaxis and post-exposure prophylaxis, going to treatment of mild disease in the outpatient, and then, of course, the treatment of uh, severe COVID-19 in patients that are hospitalized. And maybe we will need a combination of different drugs depending on the different time point on how the disease is evolving. You're encouraging new therapies, but why isn't more being spent on that? Potential vaccines have received about six times more funding than for therapies, and we don't even know if we'll get a vaccine. Uh, I guess for what I can say is that uh, it is believed that the vaccine could have, at the end of the day, a bigger impact on the course of the pandemic and also in trying to contain the spread of the virus. And this is what we have been learning for a number of uh, uh, viral diseases over years and decades. But of course, uh, you're absolutely right that probably we need not to forget that also therapeutics are extremely important and the efforts should be put also in that area to make sure that we have a good portfolio of treatment options that cover different pharmacological activities in order to make, to make sure that we can treat as soon as possible and in an efficient way patients with different uh, stages of the disease. You heard it from the EU's top strategist, Marco Cavalieri. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Böhringer Ingelheim is Germany's second biggest pharmaceuticals company with close to 6,500 staff. They're busy working on various drugs, including a special COVID-19 therapy. These antibodies may be invisible to the human eye, but they could play a vital role in neutralizing the coronavirus. Scientists in the laboratories in Biberach say they are developing new treatments as fast as they can. We are generating antibodies. They bind with the virus and prevent it from infecting other cells and the human body. So these antibodies are designed to catch the virus after it has entered the body, yet before it can do any damage. This site in Upper Swabia is Böhringen Ingelheim's largest research and development center. The head of the German division says the prospects for Biberach are good. We are in the middle of the process of building up our team in Biberach, our workforce, and we expect a slight increase in personnel over the next few years. Another approach to fighting the coronavirus is the in-house molecular library, the so-called treasure troves. These shelves contain over a million different chemical substances, the accumulated knowledge of the pharmaceutical giant. Researchers are investigating whether these substances are suitable for treating some of the effects of COVID-19. The scientists at Böhringer have joined 36 other pharmaceutical companies and research institutes around the world to form a consortium to fight the coronavirus. If we can work together, we can pool the best information from each contributor. And that is precisely the goal of the consortium, to bring together all the experts and move forward quickly. But it could take years before an anti-coronavirus drug is approved. The scientists at Böhringer Ingelheim say it's too early to speculate about a possible release date. Time to look at the viewer questions that have been coming in on our YouTube channel. Here's Derek Williams. Is COVID-19 now endemic? When I read this question, I thought, okay, it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. The fact that despite all of our fondest hopes, this virus is not going to fizzle out and go away. Um, first, let's define endemic. Um, the way we're using the word here is in its epidemiological sense, which describes 
when an infection is more or less constantly present in the background within a specific population and geographic region. Um, but it also implies that it's in a kind of steady state, uh, which COVID-19 is not at the moment. It's still spreading fast and furiously in many places all over the planet. Uh, one of two things could happen next. Uh, when enough people build up immunity to it through infection or vaccination, uh, COVID-19 could become an endemic disease, um, or it could just apparently burn itself out and disappear like SARS did. But nah, that's not gonna happen. In other words, at this point, if we could say that the disease was endemic, we'd actually be farther along the road towards returning to life as usual than we are. Um, it would mean COVID-19 was no longer out of control, but was a disease we had tools to cope with. Um, we'll develop those tools eventually, just like we did with AIDS and, and influenza. In fact, probably a lot faster, but, but wiping the virus out entirely at this point would take a massive planet-wide strategy, like the one that wiped out smallpox and has nearly banished polio. But projects like that take high levels of cooperation between nations and, and they take time. So COVID-19 is going to be with us for the foreseeable future. But to some extent, at least, for how long will depend on us.